Ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies. Ladies and gents. Got some information that I think that many of you will appreciate. But until we get to that information, we got a little bit of Bobby Womack and Patty LaBelle. No matter how high I get, I'll still be looking up to you. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes you just are in that mood. Bobby Womack and Patti LaBelle, that combination, all I can tell you, perfect combination. All right. Have some information regarding a document that I've been wanting to put together for greater than five years and or probably even longer and it's such a simple document but the concept was there the actual product wasn't done and look I'm gonna tell you exactly the way it should be told to you it doesn't need to be touched because it gets the point but see some people are gonna take what I did and they're gonna add a bunch of junk to it the first thing you need to understand is there are no case laws because there's as I said in the previous video there's no such thing as case law there there there, there are no opinions of anyone including my own ladies and gentlemen you all know that there is this thing known as a public trust Congress has announced it the courts have announced it there is a public trust let's go ahead and do the math I'm gonna pause Bobby and Patty the document this is the link for the document where you just copy and paste this link give me a second while I go and take care of this call one second I apologize ladies and gentlemen I have a friend who is in the hospital right now and not serious serious but serious enough for him to have been in the hospital for the last three days the young man lives in Florida that I told you all about and the call was coming from Florida and I thought that that was his mother calling me to let me know what else was going on no like I said it's not serious and it turns out it was the Florida police and firemen's blah, blah, blah. And they're doing their campaign. Well, I'm on a do not call list. So why are you people calling my number? You know, I didn't say that to him. I just said, I'm on a do not call list. So he was kind, nice, and says, hey, I'm going to remove your name from our list. Thank you. All right. So I apologize for that. Get back to this uh, link. The document is at this link. All you got to do is copy and paste it into your browser. Really, really, really is that simple. I mean, literally, it's that simple. But as I said, many people are going to want to add to the document. Knock yourselves out. Now, as I said, pay attention with me. It works one way. You guys are not having to sit up here and beg we produce the documents you're going to get this link too in this video you're going to get this link this is the google conversation now mind you i already knew what i was going to be asking the idiot you see you have the right to rescind a contract at any time under certain parameters what do you mean by under certain parameters well the only thing that you can rescind a contract regarding is the fact that there was some type of fraud now, you can't just say fraud because now they say you have to prove fraud. So don't bring up fraud. 
So the first thing, pay attention. First thing you're going to bring up in your document. I'm sorry, I got to scroll up. I had to do some editing. First thing you're going to bring up is you're receiving a contract and you're refusing to participate in any alleged fraudulent trust agreement. Remember, there's a trust agreement, a public trust and a trust agreement concerning you. SESTIK doesn't matter what type of trust it is. You're removing yourself from all of these fraudulent trust agreements, including that deed of trust. I do put your name there. Hereby exercise my right of rescission respecting the alleged contract and trust agreement due to now this thing says all involuntary servitude sorry got to edit that involuntary servitude subjugation trustee malfeasance deception intimidation threats coercion all a matter of public record that's where that all came from failure to inform and or divulge pertinent information as required under the agreement with the parties you see when they fail to inform you that you're giving up these rights, that rights, and that by giving up these rights or that you are not required to give up these rights, when they fail to do that or when they make it contingent upon you to participate to get yourself involved, such as telling you have to enter a plea or entering a plea on your behalf. See, that's why this is universal. It fits to all of those situations. Give me one second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the chat GPT conversation, which will be attached to this video, let's go ahead and listen to the conversation with me and the AI regarding the document, rescission of contract and participation in an alleged fraudulent trust agreement. So we're rescinding that participation as well. So we're going to start here from the beginning and we're going to let y'all hear what he got to say. One second. I underscore 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 do hereby exercise my right of rescission respecting the alleged contract and trust agreement due to involuntary servitude, subjugation, trustee malfeasance, deception, intimidation, threats, coercion, all a matter of public record failure to inform and slash or divulge pertinent information as required under the agreement with the parties. It is a fact, that in America's jurisprudence, it has clearly been established, that the legislature via the legislative process is the only cognizant branch authorized to make law. That case law is not law. It is an oxymoron, a redundancy, and a violation of delegation of authority and separation of powers within the United States of America. The statute of limitations for my rescinding the agreement under my power of election has been told as a result of the concealment and slash or misrepresentation and slash or the failure to divulge and slash or inform, and slash or the misinformation and slash or the alleged conspiracy respecting the aforementioned, as the general principle is, the statute of limitation does not commence to run until the last overt act has been accomplished. I do not need anyone's permission to rescind a contract between me and another party, as I have reserved this as a right as embedded in the Constitution for the United States of America. My right to contract, it is just that, a right. Not granted to me by a Constitution, a piece of paper, a contract, but a right secured by the Constitution, the supreme law of the land. I do not need a case citation to prove what my rights are. I only need to express what the law is, and support that conclusion with facts and conclusions of law. I have never, ever, under any circumstances, knowingly, willingly, deliberately, and slash or intentionally agreed to be bound by codes, revised statutes, ordinances, regulations, as I only agreed as one of the posterity, of the people who ordained and inaugurated the Constitution for the United States of America to follow the law, and none of the aforementioned are part of any legislative process or definition of law of the land, and are therefore non-binding upon any of the posterities of the people who wrote the Constitution for the United States, and any presumption that the preamble is not part of the Constitution was rebutted by the simple fact of intent we the people, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. I have a right to be secure in my property my possessions, my effects, my person, 
to seize and slash or commandeer any of the aforementioned is actual thievery, not according to some legal definition, but according to the law. The prohibition of seizing another person's property without their permission is secured, in fact, the constitutional prohibition explicitly says, Congress shall make no law. Abridging the right of the people. To be secure in their persons. To ask for permission to exercise a right is to evidence that somehow the right does not exist in the first instance. I have a right after having attained the age of the majority as of my 18th year of existence, whether from conception or delivery from the womb, to gain full and complete control of the securities held in my minor account, I do not need someone's permission to gain access to what belongs to me. And because the trustees have come up with a policy, procedure, scheme to steal my property in broad daylight, amounts to trustee malfeasance, theft, and fraudulent conveyance. The courts do not tell me, that by entering their courts, that I am waiving a right by making an appearance or entering a plea. That any type of plea or appearance, whether through an attorney or otherwise means that I am subjecting myself to servitude, to the court's jurisdiction. This concealment of information results in a significant deprivation slash conflict respecting property interests, and is invalid as well as void of effect. I am not told that my contract with an attorney is impeded by the court in every instance, whereby the attorney does not represent my interests but that of the courts, under some policy, some rule, and not law. My power of attorney cannot be subjugated by the court without delegation of authority, and since this is my authority, that I did not delegate, it is a breach of the trust agreement. And then there is my right to access United States coins and currencies as defined in law, the joint resolution June 5, 1933 uniformed the value of coins and currencies, and made it unlawful for any creditor claiming a debt be paid to not recognize the valuation of notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, trade acceptances, and other government obligations as eligible papers, these eligible papers are coins and currencies of the United States i.e., money, and I have been denied. Access to money which amounts to among other things as subjugation, which is directly due to trustee malfeasance. So, no, I do not wish to continue in an agreement that has been breached, trespassed upon, whereby information has been concealed, misrepresented, via misinformation and slash or fraudulent schemes. And I do hereby attest as well as affirm that the aforementioned is done of my own free will and volition witness by before God on this click or tap to enter a date. As wholly accurate, under penalty if conclusively proven otherwise, so help me God. Jurat. AF 1.21, 13. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Um, there are a couple of things I have to add, so give me one quick second. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize. When you're rescinding a contract and you're bringing up issues that involve statute of limitations, let's show this to you real quick so that you'll have an idea that I'm not just sitting up here speaking and putting something together that I know what I'm talking about. You have the right to rescind any contract, but a contract may only be rescinded under certain parameters. Let's give you one of the parameters so that you will have that. As soon as perplexity takes me to the page. So give me one second. I apologize. I had to go turn down the heater as well because it's 75 degrees in here. It was getting kind of toasty. So give me one second to put in the information. Wake up. Wake up. The statute of limitation does not commence to run until the last overt act has been accomplished. As held in the following court citations. Stop listening. I'm not trying to get the court's approval. I'm trying to let you know what a principle of law is. The statute of limitations is a law that sets the maximum time after an event within which legal proceedings may be initiated. In some cases, the statute of limitation does not, in all cases, commence to run 
until the last overt act has been accomplished. For example, in federal criminal cases, the purpose of the statute of limitations is to ensure prompt prosecution of criminal charges and da 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 blah 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 blah. However, please understand a code. Please, I don't go by codes. The code is not law. Congress was only author. <clears throat> Excuse me. Gotta hold my breath when I say that. Congress can only make law. Now, can they make regulations? Can they make codes? Yes, but not applying to the people ever. Okay. Now, we have that one thing about statute of limitations. Now, watch this. Wake up. Wake up. The right to rescind a contract based upon misinformation and or misrepresentation and or trustee malfeasance is reserved to all parties. Stop listening. Stop listening. Now, I, I gave it literally, generally, uh, a general thing. But notice this. The right to rescind a contract based on misinformation, misrepresentation, or trustee malfeasance is generally available to all parties. In cases of fraudulent misrepresentation, a party may seek to rescind a contract as a remedy for the intentional misrepresentation. This voids the contract and returns the party to their pre-contractual position. Fraudulent misrepresentation occurs when the defendant makes an intentional reckless misrepresentation of facts or opinions leading to another party's reliance on that and causing harm. You have to say by relying on that junk, it has caused you harm. It has caused harm to you and your property. In such cases, the defrauded person may seek rescission of the contract and damages. You don't have to seek it. You just have to announce that you're rescinding the contract. Okay, you do everything administratively. You don't have to go to the courts for this. We're going to talk about that in the next video. So please stay tuned. We'll be with you in just a second.